Good day, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. Thanks for joining us. We're continuing with our pre-Town Meeting Day coverage. Town Meeting Day coming up very soon, as in Tuesday, March 1st. And we have the two candidates uh, running in a contested race for the Swanton Select Board. Uh, the incumbent, Nicole Draper. Nicole, good to see you. Nice to see you as well. And David Jeskavage, uh, again, running for a two-year term. Mm -hmm. uh, Ed White, uh, who's another incumbent, running unopposed for a, a three-year term. Uh, Nicole, starting with yourself, uh, I asked you off air, easy decision to run for. Again, you were elected to do a one-year term a year ago in a very closely contested three-way race. Easy decision to run for re-election or ne never an easy decision? Uh, I mean, it's never an easy decision. It's a very thankless job, but I, I really enjoy um, Swanton as a community, and I I'm, I'm feel very privileged and lucky to be able to represent the community on the select board. Yeah. And give us a little background and tell us a little bit about yourself. I am the uh, director for Swanton Recreation, um, which has been a new position for me as well. Um, prior to that, I've been a, an entrepreneur, um, self-employed, and I moved to Swanton back in 2015 and just completely mm. fell in love with the community. Really? I raised my three children there with my husband and our dogs and um, absolutely love everything Swanton. Right, your rec department job, full-time full, full -time job? Yep. Wow. Very full-time. I'm sure the rec department budget's grown quite a bit over the years, I, I would guess, huh? Over the the span of the rec department, yeah. yes, um, we're very fortunate that a lot of our programs are self-sustaining, so it allows us to offer a wide variety of programming for the community mm -hmm. while keeping the ask for the town relatively low. Right. David, you're sure as heck no stranger to uh, Swanton, right. again, almost 10 years as the Swanton Town Administrator. Correct. A position from which you just recently stepped in, and Brian Savage, former state, former longtime state rep from now, Swanton also representing Sheldon, your success. What do you think? Uh, did the uh, select board man have a, make a decent choice with your you know, successor, they, do you think? Uh, I think they made a great choice yeah. with Brian. And I've been um, assisting him uh, through December uh, in getting acclimated to the job and teaching him the different aspects. It's uh, a pretty complicated position, uh, more complicated than most people think. And I still have a few more things to go over with him when I get a chance. It was kind of a short window uh, because he started December 1st. Mm -hmm. And with um, the Christmas holidays and, and some time that he had to take off, there wasn't a lot of um, uh, available time uh, to get everything covered. So um, every now and then on my own dime, I, I stop in and, and um, help with whatever else is needed to um, for him to be acclimated and I, I try to do the the training in them like in a, uh, a priority order so that the most important ones were covered first and now I'll get into some of the other aspects of it right. and, and you were uh, of course an administrator in Highgate for about four years before before correct. Swanton mm, correct. any other background info you want to uh, tell us well uh, for the about 30 years now I've been working for different municipalities mm in both uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. So I have quite a bit of um, experience in that area, both as a, a town administrator and town planner. Um, and I, I enjoy working with uh, the public and helping to um, determine the, the future uh, growth of uh, the towns that I've worked for. Uh, so it's, it's uh, both uh, challenging and pleasant uh, at the same time. And uh, I, I retired um, uh, at the end of December in 2021. And uh, that's, um, since then I've been you know, just uh, um, doing more or less staying at home for now and looking at different possibilities. I might uh, try to find something uh, municipal in a, a part-time um, aspect uh, in the future. Uh, gets a little boring sitting at home during the day, so <laughs> mm -hmm. I need something to keep me busy. And part of my motivation for running um, for the select board uh, this year is the um, the large background that I have uh, in the history in the town itself of uh, the town business, and uh, just wanting to keep busy doing something um, worthwhile um, instead of just um, reading stuff and surfing the internet. Yeah. So, Nicole, the uh, decision to hire Brian Savage, was that an e easy decision? How many candidates did you have for that job? 
Uh, there were several, um, yeah. but I, I feel that Brian was a, a great choice. Yeah. Uh, he is very passionate about Swanton, and uh, he's doing a great job yeah. so far. Because, um, again, you've been on the board for one year. Mm -hmm. Do you feel Swanton? Are you comfortable with uh, where Swanton's headed at this point? Of course, difficult times for everybody with the pandemic almost two years into that. But are you comfortable with uh, your year on the board with what the board's accomplished? Um, I think that we work together very well as a board and um, obviously look forward to continue to working with them in every capacity, um, whether it is a fellow board member or just as a community member. Um, there's you know a lot of a lot of big things coming up down the pike with the ARPA funds and um, just general economic growth that could be fabulous moves uh, for Swanton to, to continue to grow in the mm -hmm. future. And speaking of the ARPA money, again, that's American Rescue Plan Act mm -hmm. money. Are you still in the process of figuring how, how much money do, does the town have to spend? I Can don't we? have an updated number yeah. currently, um, but the up until recently, they've really been unclear on guidance. So we've been waiting for the leagues of cities and towns to offer us some more support yeah. and understanding exactly um, which direction we, you know, ha can go in using the funds. And you've got um, some time. You've got a few years, I yes. believe, to figure that out. Yes. Interesting. Any, any, any project, anything jumping out as a good project you'd like to be spending some of that money on? Um, we've, we've really just started to, yeah. to break the dirt on that. Um, I mean, I think there are lots of great possibilities um, you, from supporting local and small business to economic development to um, increasing the infrastructure to other parts of the town um, which could be very beneficial for economic growth mm -hmm. so it's we're, we're still just scratching scratching the top of that pile yet so mm -hmm. i i haven't made a decision on where i feel that they would be best spent yeah. david any thoughts any particular places you'd like to see some of the arpa money spent well one is the um, the basement of the town office building we were oh. discussing that last year because we have a uh, because of the uh, dates when it was built back in the mid to uh, late 1800s for the addition, yeah. um, it has a field stone foundation which allows a lot of rainwater to seep into the basement, which has a dirt floor. And uh, that dampness is a health issue because it, it could uh, create black mold. Uh, that's not evident now, but it, that, that is a possibility because of the... Um, the, the constant um, dampness down there. And I think that that is probably one of the areas where that uh, ARPA money would qualify for uh, being spent uh, to correct that issue. We did some initial research um, in the last part of last year when I was still the town administrator and um, found it was going to be very expensive to do the corrections that are needed to keep it uh, the water out of the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, if if we do qualify for the ARPA uh, funds to correct that, uh, it would be a big benefit to the town to uh, save the taxpayers' money. Yeah. And the, the problem with ARPA right now, as um, Nicole alluded to, is that Congress didn't give much guidance on what uh, you could qualify for. Uh, with the exception of water and sewer projects and um, the um, uh, you know, the, uh, the web, not the web, but the, the provision of the uh, of the uh, service, uh, the broadband, and which Swanton is pretty much covered with that. So that's out. We have no water and sewer to, to use it on. So that leaves it up to the, the most vague area that um, they allowed, which was for uh, helping businesses and um, health and, and corrections and so forth. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think what they, what Congress needs to do is more clearly define um, the types of projects that uh, the money can be spent on. Right now, towns have to spend the money first on something then send the uh, a report on what it was spent on uh, yeah. to the feds and then they decide at that point whether or not it was a, a worthwhile project uh, so a town could ex expend the thousands of dollars and then find out that it, it you know by the feds that it wasn't eligible for the money pretty pretty convoluted yeah it, it's the opposite of what you normally apply That's for a grant where yeah. you fill out an application for a certain project to submit yeah. that 
yeah, with your documentation and then um, it, it's either approved or not denied. Uh, so you know mm -hmm. up front before you spend anything um, where you stand. Yeah, there are 10, 10 articles on the town warning again, town meeting day coming up on Tuesday, March 1st. You obviously had did, did a lot of work on this. Uh, can I assume you support all 10 articles on the warning or, or not? Well, actually, I wasn't involved in that. So not involved at all. I let uh, Brian uh, okay. work with Brian's uh, baby. the town clerk. So 10 that. articles, and it looks like kind of the similar appropriation request, but do you support everything on there or not? Well, th there's one article um, that I'm aware of that where the uh, police service would be increased we currently have a contract for 133,000 uh, for the coming year. Yeah, and, and going um, up to a proposal is about 157,000, so that's it, up fairly it, significantly. And it is, and I don't think we really need the the extra service. It's not. Uh, uh, you don't. You a, don't a, think it's. I needed. think no, they're doing a, a good job with the contract we have now with 133, mm -hmm. which is for a specific uh, time coverage, uh, all seven days of the week. And uh, in the past, we found that if we needed um, uh, special police coverage for something during the day, uh, then uh, the, we would have a gentleman's agreement with the, the SWAT police uh, to do that uh, work, and then they would bill us just for that particular uh, special uh, mm -hmm. project. And uh, that costs a lot less than increasing the budget for full-time uh, coverage by the police. Okay. Let me ask Nick, Nicole. You're again. You're obviously on the select board. Are you are you comfortable with the additional request for the uh, police coverage? So we we did not we did not put the additional request for extra police coverage. We've con decided that it was best to continue on with the coverage that we current ha uh, right. currently have, and right. then the increase that you're seeing here is because of the increase of insurance and fuel okay. um, and other maintenance issues that are not issues but right. things incorporated for um, giving the service that we currently have so not not it's not not an increase in coverage no it, this year it is not okay. um, we have just welcomed a new police chief into the Swanton community yeah, Chief Matt, um, Matt Sullivan just taking command boy correct. walks right into a homicide tough way to start I guess huh? it, it is um, but no better way than to hit the ground running I suppose yeah. Um, you feel Swanton Village PD has done a decent, good job covering the town? I, I think that they, with what they're contracted to do, they do yeah. a, a great job. I don't yeah. think enough community members understand um, how much time goes into processing individual stops or uh, calls for service. Yeah. Um, and that was a, a really big educational piece <clears throat> for me this year to understand, you know, the amount of time that goes into just one call for service. And yeah. well, just having one dedicated officer to the town during the time of our contract, you know, that takes up a, a good majority of his time. Um, but as, you know, as a resident of West Swanton I you know I feel like the coverage is the presence is there um, and they're working on continually making improvements so that they have a more presence in the town yeah, yeah I logged about five years I was a resident of uh, Hog Island West Swanton for about five years going back many many years now, an issue that received quite a bit of attention was what to do with the former town garage site near the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And I know you had some, I think, public meetings about that. Did you, was that nailed down eventually, or is that? The select board decided to um, take the piece of property off the market and mm -hmm. to continue to evaluate its potential for recreational use. Okay. Um, of course, it's right on basically the, the rec, the uh, Richard Dick Thompson Fit and Healthy. It is on the Fit and path. Healthy, which connects to the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, mm -hmm. which is a great recreational it asset. It sounds like it's going to be completed. It sounds like that will be completed in the not too distant future. 2022 is when oh, they're saying so. That's great. Um, and so the committee that's been working on, on what, you know, the presentation for the select board has presented some um, general ideas of what the property could be used for um, and the select board has decided that this year we're going to tackle the the brownfields to the piece of property before we continue to move forward on on what exactly you know its main uses are going to be interesting David thoughts on that uh, on, on how that property should be used um, oh, I think it, it, it should be 
kept uh, in the town ownership and pro probably right now the, the, the best possible use would be recreational of some sort. Because the town did have, there was a potential buyer for that property as I recall. Right, some um, yeah, Ed, Ed White talked to somebody and they yeah. worked out a deal and then once that became public, um, a lot of citizens started um, coaxing the, the select board to not go through with that and to consider um, uh, uh, the site as a recreation site. And it is ideal for a lot of different types of development, but in that particular area, because of its uh, adjacent, uh, adjacent to the uh, rec path and also immediately across from the school playground, mm -hmm. uh, it would uh, fit nicely um, as a recreation uh, site. What uh, could be done on it is still under consideration by the, the citizen group that's studying it. And uh, it has um, uh, three-phase power there. It has uh, municipal water and sewer, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Vermont gas lines uh, going through it. So um, whatever, if a structure were put there uh, for recreation, it would be able to take advantage of all those um, amenities. and. Uh, it, it does have a rec uh, I mean a, a triangular shape uh, which could be creatively worked with uh, to uh, uh, put a building on it and it's uh, about 1.2 acres approximately yeah. um, and we have a survey of it an old survey um, and that uh, would make it easier for someone to design something on it. Of course, the big issue for Swanton, which any resident, you know, everybody probably talks about all the time, just truck traffic, just a tough issue for the village and the town. Um, any any reason to think there might be a, any kind of a significant reduction in truck traffic in the future, or no no reason to think that? Well, it depends on where they're headed. Yeah. Um, if they're headed to uh, St. Albans, the the uh, ex completion of the extension of Robert Hood Drive helps quite a bit. Uh, and I've noticed um, just in driving through there every now and then that a lot of people are taking advantage of that, I guess including talking, trucks. You know, spe especially about Route 78 in West Swanton, I guess, with this uh, New York to Vermont uh, traffic. Y yeah, there's no real way to cut down on uh, mm. truck traffic there. There have been studies done in the past where there were um, the very distant past plans to extend it up through um, West Highgate and go across um, part of the um, uh, refuge that goes up into there and then across the uh, the river to connect to uh, Route 78 north of the of the village area. I'm not hearing anything. Those are long no, ago. They, yeah, they just faded away and no yeah. one's ever brought them back. Mm -hmm. And the promise by uh, VTrans to upgrade uh, Route 78 uh, from the village uh, border uh, up to the um, Albert Bridge keep coming back every few years with promises that yeah. you know one or two years they'll be done and, and it sounds and then like they change your mind right. again. and it sounds like it's not significant changes from what I'm hearing anyway I think originally it sounded like maybe some rerouting but it sounds right. like whenever that work if it ever gets done doesn't sound like particularly significant changes in the route or anything no they, they did have a plan at one time um, to uh, where the, the big curve is by Louis Landing yeah. to take the road and straighten it and go yeah. through that open field that's there um, and then try to make it a little more straight. Mm -hmm. uh, but they scrapped that from the last set of plans they brought in several years ago and um, did have plans at that time uh, to um, really regrade the road by digging up the entire base, yeah. rebuilding that, and then paving over that, which would make it a lot smoother and a lot less susceptible to damage by the yeah. adjacent waters. Um, and the last promise we got on that was uh, the year before last, where they uh, told the board that um, I think by um, 2025 they had a goal of having that completed. But now it's, yeah. it's still dragging on and it's getting closer and we're, we're as of the time that I was still there, we hadn't heard anything new about yeah. that going through. Nicole, again, truck traffic, obviously a, a big issue always for, I think, a lot of residents. But again, not, not much reason to think any, any significant changes coming down the pike. 
Uh, not, not to my and knowledge. It sounds like you deal with that every every day, pretty much uh, out in West Swanton, huh? I sure do. Um, I, I I've noticed a significant difference with the the border, obviously being closed due to the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but there, it's you know, it's a it's the gateway to New York, and and it's an entryway yeah. into our great state. Yeah. So I, it's it's just a very heavily trafficked route. And again, it sounds like, as David said, again, it sounds like some work on Route 78 coming up, but it doesn't sound like any any particularly significant changes in the route or anything. Nothing. Hopefully a bigger shoulder, maybe a wider shoulder. But when I see a, I'm not out there as much as I used to be, but occasionally I'll see a, a bike rider going along Route 78, and, and I cringe. T tough enough driving a vehicle, I mean insane place to me to be riding a bike i i, I don't disagree yeah. um but I, I do also see many bicyclists many, using right? many. that as a route wow. um <clears throat> uh, from the last visit that vtrans made it sounded like that they were considering widening the road yeah. um still working with homeowners along the portion of 78 to do the right of way um and it's you know the wildlife refuge is is a federally owned piece of land mm -hmm. so having to to go through all of those channels to make sure that yeah. that's properly done is, so it's it's you know not a very quick process yeah speaking of the pandemic how do you think the town is feared dealing with this obviously very tough situation almost two years into it i think the town's done reasonably well just kind of grappling and certainly made a huge difference with your meetings it's made you know, work on the select board, obviously, a little more difficult, I would guess. It's made it different. Anyway. different. I wouldn't I guess necessarily... In some way, I guess some positives uh, with the Zooming meetings, you're getting me hopefully some folks who didn't use to check in on meetings before. Definitely, it's been um, increased accessibility for community members yeah. to be able to attend board meetings, yeah. um, which has been nice. We have had some technological uh, difficulties as we develop a system to where we can have Zoom. Yeah. Um, we're very fortunate that we've uh, upgraded to a system to, to streamline that process to make it more um, convenient for th both board members and community members, which I think is going to be just a way of the future moving forward. Yeah. Um, but overall, I, I think the town, you know, has has done a great job through the pandemic. Um, it's been challenging on all departments. Yeah. Um, but I think we've all really come together and worked together and, and really built back up local community. Um, and that, I think, is a great thing for Swanton. Meetings at this point, people can attend in-person meetings, and are you still Zooming also? Correct. And you think you'll continue? Will you continue Zooming for... Uh, the few, maybe maybe always. Who knows about always? I think it's a. I think it's a great idea. I I think you know with uh, as a parent, I know busy schedules mm -hmm. doesn't always allow me to come yeah. to an in person meeting. But being able to zoom in still allows me to um, express my concerns or opinions or or sh be involved in things that I'm yeah. interested in. Um, and I I think it's a way of the future. I don't think it's going anywhere. Interesting. David, the pandemic, I'm sure that made your job pretty challenging or, or you know, different at times. But uh, When it initially hit, it was a little more difficult because we yeah. had, uh, at that time, it was almost no uh, good information about uh, the coronavirus and what it could do to people. So right. I believe the different governments uh, erred on the, the side of precaution by making some pretty severe restrictions mm -hmm. and we were um, when it initially started uh, in the town office um, the board at that time uh, set it up uh, so that um, probably about half the staff could be there one day of the week <coughs> and the other half the following day um, and then on the days they weren't there they would work from home um, and that made it a little more difficult to um, to follow things, I guess, uh, because you're not there every day. And it also made it more difficult for the researchers who normally would come in and work with the, um, uh, the clerks on um, doing their deed researches in the vault. Um, but after uh, the initial shock um, of, of the coronavirus um, was, was over with and we started learning more about it, uh, we went back to a, a policy of uh, uh, having everyone there during the day and then having people who had to come in to 
meet with one of the uh, employees in the building, uh, would have to make an appointment and then wear a mask and uh, not ha be asked those typical questions that you were supposed to ask mm -hmm. when someone came into a building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that uh, worked okay for a while. And then uh, as less and less uh, concern uh, became uh, available uh, at all levels, uh, we went back to um, having um, uh, people come in un without appointments, even the researchers. Mm -hmm. And just uh, down to a few minutes left here, let me tell you. Oh, okay. And then the uh, but we would have to wear a mask when they were in, yeah. the, in the building, that's right. But uh, it, it was tough to, to deal with, yeah. I, I bet, I, I bet. Um, we may have touched on this village, uh, Swanton Town village relations. Are they, I know, in the past have been, I think the folks used to meet, the trustees and select board would meet quarterly, maybe, but. You feel relations are, are decent between the town and village, uh, Nicole, or your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I feel that they are. Um, we yeah. recently just had a, a just a discussion meeting um, that was public and the public could zoom into it. And I, yeah. I thought that was a great way for us to connect um, all of the projects that both municipalities are working on to really formulate the whole one Swanton idea um, and and I, I feel as somebody who works for the town supported by both the village and the town um, which is just a, a great feeling I th we've got a really great group of individuals working for both municipalities yeah. David town village relations uh, I think are pretty pretty good yeah they were good uh, during the time I was there and of course the coronavirus interrupted uh, yeah. everything a little bit uh, but we've always had good relations and have traded off equipment and and uh, some short plow routes, that sort of thing, and um, have gotten uh, uh, assistance from the village in uh, certain areas when we needed it, and vice versa. So I think that uh, worked out well. Yeah, I think Swanton may be the envy of some folks in St. Albans, uh, with St. Albans City and Town usually having some issues to deal with. Down to a couple minutes, uh, Nicole, I'll give you, say, no more than a minute or a little less to make your case. Why would you <laughs> like to uh, stay on the Swanton Select Board for two more years? I, I'm just really invested into the community, and this has been a great opportunity for me to um, meet the people, serve the people, and I, I'm just very grateful for all of the opportunities to understand how a town works, um, and I feel like it's given me the opportunity to educate some community members that may have not been knowledgeable of those things prior, um, and I, I just look forward to being a part of it in any capacity. So I'd very love good. to continue to serve. Great. Thank you. David, I'll give you a minute or so to make your case. Why would you like to go from town administrator to town select board? Well, I, I miss working for the town uh, since I retired in December and uh, have um, quite a bit of experience uh, going back uh, almost 10 years as the town administrator and have a pretty good knowledge of the business history of the town and working with all the different individuals um, uh, that I've helped uh, over the years and have a very good knowledge of how a municipality uh, is supposed to be run um, with regard to the laws and policies and so forth. And so we'd like to um, continue uh, serving the community um, on the, the select board for the next two years and providing more of my knowledge and um, service to the, the town, which uh, I love, so. Very, very good. And again, um, town meeting day not far away, Tuesday, March 1st. Folks can request ballots from the town clerk's office if you're not going to be voting on March 1st. There's a informational meeting on the articles in Swanton coming up on February 22nd. If I didn't know, we're taping this show on Wednesday, February 9th. But again, we have a contested race for the Swanton <laughs> Select Board. Um, again, David Jeskavage challenging uh, incumbent Nicole Draper and 10 articles on the warning. So some big issues coming up in Swanton. Thanks for watching us here on Northwest Access TV. Thanks to producer Roger. We'll see you next time. Thanks.